everyone, welcome to the first of Kirkley's Library's International Women's Day events. It's called Meet, Make and Listen with sound artist Ellen Culley. And it's our third event in our Living Knowledge Network events in conjunction with the British Library. So I'll just cut, pull a couple of banners up, that one for the International Women's Day and one for the Living Knowledge Network. So if you want to find out more about International Women's Day, if you just go to internationalwomensday.com, you'll be able to find out lots of information and read about lots of inspiring women. And they've got a campaign, which is hashtag choose to challenge, which is challenging gender inequalities. And they've also got hashtag IWD 2021. So that's International Women's Day. And then the Living Knowledge Network, which I've talked to about on some other things that we've done to do with that. That's in conjunction with the British Library. And you can find out more at this website as well. So the other events that we've done for the Living Knowledge Network can be found on Kirkley's Library's YouTube channel. We did a zine making workshop, which I know Hannah appeared on as well. And we had in conversation with four artists and one of those artists was the artist that we're going to be meeting today, Ellen Cully. And those are all available, as I said, on the Kirkley's Library's YouTube channel and you can catch up with them there. And the other thing I'd like to just mention is about books. So as libraries, obviously, we absolutely loved books and we liked them to be right at the centre of everything we do. So Hannah, who you'll be meeting in a moment, and another apprentice called Ambreen put together an amazing curator collection, especially for International Women's Day. So you can go along and have a look at the collection. I'll just get the usual website up. So it's at kirklees.overdrive.com. And you'll be able to see the International Women's Day collection of books there and just have a browse, have a choose and borrow them for free. So let's have a look at what we're doing next. So now you know about the books and you know about some of the events to catch up. I think it might be worth meeting Hannah. <clears throat> yeah, hello everyone. I'm a library apprentice for Kirkley's Libraries and I'm really excited to be co-hosting this event today. So I think it's time to meet our exciting guests, who's a sound artist and a composer. So let's welcome on screen, Eleanor Cully. Hi, Eleanor. Hi. Hi. I was on mute. Sorry. Good way to start. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Thank you. And you, Hannah. So can you tell us a little bit about the work you do with sound? Yeah. So um, as you said, I'm a sound artist and composer, and I love to listen and explore sounds in my work. I make a lot of recordings. Um, on quite a small scale, I have a small Zoom recorder here that I use. And um, before that, I had an even smaller um, budget recorder. And I make recordings of spaces um, in my home at the moment during lockdown. Um, but also, I do a lot of kind of small scale performances um, of, of things. I'm a singer as well. So I, I record myself singing, but sometimes I kind of um, emphasize the space that I'm in so I kind of capture the sense of the space and not just the um, notes that I'm singing and I like to kind of focus in on the context um, of a location so for me sound art is is really about that it's about embracing where we are um, and my music kind of touches on context as well as material yeah what sort of sounds have you recorded um so the most recent sound that i recorded uh was a it's actually um i've got it here um i've got an amazing little instrument that my friend eka made for me and she's selling these at the moment on her bandcamp page um, and this is a tiny, what she calls an egg flute. So it's an egg that um, wow. the top has been, yeah, it's beautiful, very, very delicate. And um, so each one sounds different. I think the, the idea is that you blow across it 
um, in the way that you would play a flute. But for me, I'm very interested in recording small spaces, which we're going to be looking into today. And so I actually yeah. have been trying to find ways of recording the egg flute itself as a space. Um, so I bought a, a tiny microphone that can fit inside the um, hole and I've been experimenting with recording that tiny space to see if there's anything <laughs> I can get from it. Who would have thought you could who would have thought you could record the sound of inside an eggshell? That's amazing. There's such <laughs> know, a tiny yeah. space and who could imagine what it would sound like? Because I guess I guess because you're doing it as a flute, so it would involve like the movement of air across it or near it or inside it and then recorded that rather than putting it up to your ear and having to listen to the sound of the egg shell <laughs> oh, oh gosh how exciting cool yeah so um I didn't get very far with that yet because I need to um get a better microphone but it's that is the project I'm working on right now so it's it's nice to talk about it yeah and 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 what a great thing to be thinking about when we open the fridge and take an egg out that actually that can be turned into a flute who would know who would yeah. know that <laughs> um so what other things are we going to be hearing about today I, I, are we going to be here well i know i can't pretend that i don't know we're going to be hearing a bit of music maybe a bit of sound um mainly sound i shouldn't be saying music um yeah um so I've, I've got um, several recordings and a couple of videos to play today. Fantastic. Um, so maybe we should start with the first recording. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, um, of course. Which the, the title of this piece, we'll just listen to the first two minutes, if that's OK, because we, we won't have time to play all the recordings. Um, through. Oh, so just like a taster. Yeah, so this piece is called The Smallest Place I Tried to Record Was the Inside of a Shell. Okay. Uh, and it's from 2017. Um, the track that you've got is called Shell Sample Track. Um, so that's the, the same piece. Brilliant. So we'll bring that up now. You never listen to a seashell for very long. Very soon, the long sea stretches out. are only very little. You never listen to a seashell. Could you tell us a little bit about that, Eleanor? Just 
yeah, so, so um, difference in I, I wasn't expecting the human voice to come into that actually so yeah um and and whilst I remember as well um when I was listening to this last night um on our test on StreamYard I had better headphones so I could hear it a little bit more detailed I don't know if you could hear the um the kind of background sound in that as well um today but if anyone's listening at home maybe using some headphones rather than I don't it's know what the sound was like through um, your device, but sometimes if it if it's very quiet, it might be good to listen in headphones. Um, but yeah, so that piece, as you could see from the photo, hopefully was a recording of a bathroom through the inside of a shell. So I basically had a recorder a bit like this one, and um, I placed two shells either side of the microphone and left it running. Um, in the bathroom. For me, the bathroom has a nice acoustic um, with the tiles, but mostly, I, I don't know, I think the relationship between shells and, and being in the bathroom, um, I know there are a few people's bathrooms that sometimes have these shells. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew people who, when they collected shells from the beach, they would put them in their bathroom for some reason I don't know why that room um so I just thought it was a nice place to record and I left it running um I slid the door closed and um moved on and I often make recordings that way I sort of leave the recorder in a room if I'm trying to capture some environmental sound oh. so um and I think I after a while went in to out of the spoken part in the room but I may have recorded it separately in the end and put them put it together in software but either way um yeah I was experimenting with text and the idea of listening to a shell and when you listen to a shell you never listen for very long it's always a quick a quick experience yeah. Um, you don't tend to sit there for kind of like half an hour with the shell against you. Yeah. Well, not regularly. I mean, some people may. but And that's an idea, actually, because then you probably do almost. It's probably a very relaxing thing to do, that, that kind of listening to the sea, you know, from the shell for quite a while. I haven't tried that. I might do that after today. <laughs> anyway, oh sorry, Eleanor. Um, no, no, that's great. Um, yeah, the whole, the whole experience of listening to the sea and... Um, and trying to kind of capture that beautiful, kind of quite childlike um, experience really yes. in a recording, but but elongating it and making it, you know, putting words with it and, and just letting the sound kind of play. Um, in fact, I think I added the words for, it was played on the radio once a friend of mine um, said they'd like to play something and I sent it to him and I wow. think I added the words for that, so it kind of gave a bit of a context. Yeah, it, it, and it sort of almost like shifts the space as well. So when you're listening to it, you, you're kind of listening to the sounds and then the human voice appears, but it, the way that it sounds within the recording, I think, it, it sort of really suits that sort of far away um, sort of that far away place so when you're listening to a, a seashell at home it might transport you to the beach or that time that you were I don't know having loads of fun and the sun was shining and <laughs> you could do all those things and then um, yeah. and the voice sort of brings you to another place it kind mm. of takes you through yeah I think it's great really like the way the voice interrupts you listening and makes you listen in a different way yeah, what software you. do I, you sorry no, no, go <laughs> I was on. just going to ask a question um what software do you use to put the recordings together at the moment I use the software called Reaper um which is free and um I've got a Mac and you can use it on Mac and Windows uh and but back then I think I was using Ableton um so and Audacity is another free software that's quite simple to use um, yeah for people looking as well so yeah cool <laughs> great so um 
what's next? Oh, so next, um, I will read out a document that I, um, or piece of writing I put together um, that kind of talks through the, pra the practice of listening and recording seashells, which if you haven't guessed already, is something wow. that I love to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I will just read through this, if that's okay. Yeah, would you and like anything on screen to... while you read through it? Or are you happy to just read through it? No, I, I'm happy um, to just, yeah, to leave right. it like this. And then um, there's some more examples of the works that I'm talking about in this um, document to Brilliant. be played afterwards. So. The smallest place I tried to record was the inside of a seashell. 2017. I wanted to record the inside of a very small space. A space that's not possible to fit inside. I placed two seashells either side of a Zoom recorder on the bathtub, slid the door closed and left it running for around nine minutes. For a version on the radio, I added a performance of some spoken words. You never listen to a seashell for very long. Very soon, the long sea stretches out and our ears are only very little. Some months later, I recorded the bathroom in my new house through the shell and released this recording on a split cassette tape titled Bathroom Showroom. For a performance in Leeds, I added a humming pattern repeating over the tape for its duration of 10 minutes. In 2019, I wrote a piece for Drift Ensemble that involved recording various seashells in a studio with one of the performers. We used a small microphone that could fit inside and only recorded each one for two minutes. Imitations of these recordings in the work lasted for a few seconds at a time, never very long. In November, 2020, I filtered a homemade recording through one of these studio recordings to coat it in the seashell sound. This is released on Blank Tape Compilation Volume 2. 2021, now I have a tiny microphone to record the insides of egg flutes. But the microphone came faulty and makes crackling sounds. I managed to capture some of the eggshell softly tapping against it and made another recording with my Zoom recorder placed up against the egg flute on a window ledge. It's very subtle and possible to hear the filter when speaking. Wow, that's, that's really, it's really lovely to hear that journey and from what, you know, as it progresses and your sort of decision making about adding the voice and yeah, and the idea of recording in small spaces is such a lovely, a lovely idea. And especially when we're in lockdown and we're all unable to go out as much. And if you're creating art, you don't always have an enormous amount of space. <laughs> so yeah. small spaces, working with small spaces. I know it started before lockdown, but it must have been possible to kind of continue that while we were in while we're in lockdown as well. Hannah, do you have any thoughts about what Ellen has just said or any questions? Yeah, I was just wondering how lockdown had affected the way that you work. Good question, Hannah, thank you. Yeah, it, re it really has. I mean, um, in the second part of this talk, I'll be talking about a piece um, that I touched on in our last StreamYard conversation, Jude. Um, yeah. And this piece kind of, well, the exhibition where it was installed closing um, caused me to want to release it into the world because it became clear that it, it wasn't going to be um, presented publicly anymore because the exhibition had to shut and we couldn't of find course. a way to reopen it. So I, I made my first album on Bandcamp um, and split the piece up. It was a long piece. And from there, well, I only then did one more Bandcamp album in the summer, but it caused me to want to work in that way a bit more. Um, and I'll talk wow. more about the, those pieces in the second half. 
But um, yeah, it, it made me kind of present things online, as I think we've all done things online, haven't we? So um, that we might not have done before. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So it has affected uh, my practice. is is fairly similar. Recording um, spaces and and putting sounds into them, um, but rather than going and presenting it in a context of a gallery or a concert hall, um, I had to think a bit differently about the other space. And in the album I made, um, which I'll talk about later, I found a, a way of doing that um, in collaboration with other people and their spaces. So yeah fantastic wonderful yeah so we haven't mentioned I mean I did mention about the other event that we did which was in conversation with four artists and Eleanor obviously you were one of the artists that we were in conversation with so that was a total <laughs> treat um, and it was a great event we um it was about a week ago I think time flies doesn't it yeah. um, but it's available to watch on Kirkley's Library's YouTube and it's called In Conversation with Four Artists and you'll be able to see it there um, and there's yeah it's four sound, ar sound artists all women and it was part of the Living Knowledge Network program of events so it's definitely worth having a good look. Cool so we I've got some other things that I can see that we might be playing. Do you want me mm -hmm. to play yeah, some? Yeah, so um, I think next, if you don't mind, Jude, to play um, the Shell 2 and 3 track. Yeah, cool. The image um, from the studio. So in that, um, the text that I read out, I mentioned recording shells in a music studio. So, um, so this studio had padded walls. It had access to good microphones and speakers. Wow. Um, which was a suggestion by one of the performers in, in Drift Ensemble. Um, when I said I'd like to record some shells together to use in the piece, I just assumed we'd be recording them at home um, or, you know, in some public space. I didn't ever imagine we'd go to a studio. And so um, I kind yeah. of found this interesting because um, yeah. the studio obviously finds ways of, of muting the background sound so you could no longer hear when you listen to a shell you can hear cars going by and sounds around you filtered through the shell and so in the studio those things were going to be much less um, oh. so this en enables us to hear the shell as much as it's possible to hear it without too much else going on so the track is um 30 seconds of one size shell and then 30 seconds of a different one it's just so you can hear that there is a change of pitch there is a change um in the sound and each shell sounds different so okay hopefully this will go through Sorry. Oh. Can we hear it? No. Hi, do we have it?
Hi, sorry that I, that might have been a bit delayed. I do apologize for Don't that. Don't worry, that's fine. I but we did get to hear it. Yeah, when we're listening on StreamYard and online platforms, the um, the sound can be filtered or the the background noise can be suppressed and things like that. So it it doesn't sound exactly as it um, would if you were just playing the file. But there was a a small moment of the shell in there somewhere. So. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely hear hear it. It's quite strong. Yeah, definitely. Wow. So, did you enjoy recording it in the studio? Did that did that create a whole different experience for you as a sound artist to actually because um, obviously we think of musicians going into recording studios, but as sound artists, I wouldn't know where you would do your recording apart from yeah, in different studio spaces as in art studio spaces rather or home or yeah I've, I've realized over time that um my practice is very much based on you know kind of the DIY approach doing things myself with a budget recorder um often and kind of capturing the sense of space it's very lo-fi it's not I'm not too interested in um kind of EQing the sound and making it super pristine um, yeah. in works that I make. I, I kind of embrace that noise and the environmental sounds and, um, you know, the, the spoken voice in the moment that it was recorded. There's a kind of presence that's captured there. Um, and I really enjoy listening to those elements of um, sound. So... Yeah, the studio, it was interesting because, as I said, I'd never even considered somehow, even though that's where, um, you know, non-lockdown times musicians would be recording. But um, mm -hmm. because it's such a, the, the process of listening through a show, you are listening to your environment filtered through it. So um, I realised making the video, which we're going to play in a minute, that um, you'll see it's I made the video on a window ledge and that's because I the microphone was pointing down the road where the cars were going by and having cars going um, by very closely meant that I could hear the changes through the shell they were more emphasized because oh. of the noise going on in the background and, and were I in a very quiet dead room I wouldn't there wouldn't be as much to hear so in some ways I quite like to embrace the environment and the studio although it the recordings are quite um focused in a way it's just the shell there's nothing going on I wouldn't necessarily use those and place them in contexts I in the end okay. they were used the performers um listened to them and imitated them on their instruments oh so, so it, different... was, it was a different method yeah. of recording for a different yeah, yeah. purpose really Wow. So um, if I was somebody who wanted to think about sound art, what you've already said is quite encouraging because of the lo-fi angle of it, that yeah. sound art could be made within your own space or maybe, well, we'll find out a little bit more when as we go along in this workshop, but the, the idea of something not needing masses of technology to yeah. create it means that people can just have a go can't they within their own spaces yeah it's as much for me about listening to, as recording um so with the with the shell practice for example you know that definitely started with listening and thinking about listening um and then I just wanted to capture that listening and elongate it and put it with words and, and you could do that without recording at all so um yeah, it's definitely more about thinking about what you might want to listen to and how you might want to present work as much as the actual technology. So you'll maybe you maybe listen to the seashell and then you thought about it and then you recorded it and then you give it out into the world to then other people can then listen to it and think about what they're listening to. Yeah, it's lovely. It's very nice circular kind of um, listening because we all sometimes we're rushing around so much we forget to listen don't we when we're in yeah, an environment definitely. or um, and so when we're out on our what called lockdown walks at times but when we're out <laughs> on lockdown walks 
that's a lovely opportunity to just take it a bit slower and listen to I go near the canal so I can hear some of the, the water movement and the birds and the leaves dropping and all sorts. So, yeah, it's, it's always a good practice to take some time to properly listen, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you have once anything? You, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, once you've made a recording, is it featured on anything like productions or TV programmes or anything? Um, occasionally, I've I've had um, pieces on the radio, yeah, and um, and that's that's great. But often, because my work is so um, about context, and I'm often thinking about a space that it's presented in or how I want to present it, um, the experience of playing it on the radio is always different and always unexpected, which can be really great. But it can mean it. And also, you know, playing music through StreamYard, actually, in any platform mm. that can affect or compress the sound, it's always slightly different to how I imagined it. Um, so, yeah, and, and you asked about how my work's changed over lockdown. I think this is something else that's changed, is my... Um, I'm kind of interested now in, in putting my work out there perhaps more than I was before because I was kind of saving it for moments in yeah. person and kind of you had to be there almost to hear it um so yeah it's it's there forever in a way if it's if it's online or if it's played on the radio um it could be on catch up or something so it's a very different way of thinking about work and I'm kind of slowly emerging in that sense <laughs> that's great and you and and the context of it where it's listened to could vary incredibly couldn't it could be in the yeah. car listening to it or you know or in your front room or on headphones when you're going out or yeah it's it's really interesting how you've shifted into kind of it being available to listen to for people to download and things I think it's great in lots of ways but it does shift it from one space to another doesn't it very much wow should we call the studio Jude um maybe because of I'm just gonna yeah time we've got yeah as well, which so. which bit were you wanting to so play the next? video that's called meet make and listen and oh yeah of course oh yeah of course Thank that you. illustrates what, <laughs> what we've just been talking about I'll get that one up thank you
universal decision for my own. Very soon, the long sea stretches out, and our eyes are in the night. Hey. Wow. That was really cool to see how you use loads of different instruments, well, objects to create different sounds. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it was um it was a video to kind of demonstrate what I was talking about, but I thought it'd be much easier just to listen um and to to see that you can really listen to anything. I mean, I've got a coffee cup here, but if you if you kind of listen to that space. Um, it's no different to listening to a shell. You can hear those kind of noisy sounds of the room and um, putting it up to a microphone is just the same thing. The microphone is like an ear. Um, and if you've got access to a microphone or, or a microphone on your smartphone, maybe, um, you could do the same and experiment. Also something else that's fun to do is to play a sound. It could be a piece of music or any kind of sound that's maybe loud enough um, and play it through different objects like glasses and cups and mugs and things because you'll hear um, it will sound very, very different inside those small spaces. It's like kind of playing something in a church and you get the reverb created by the stone walls of the space. Um, and you can do that on a much smaller scale as well. So if you don't have access to a recorder of any kind, you can always um, use a device to play sound as well. Yeah, it was clever to see how you did it as well with the video, to see how you um, made it go over the recorder, and how it picked up the different sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that sort of, it did very much what Hannah was saying, just explained kind of that change in sound and how everyday objects you can kind of properly listen to and, and make recordings of if you choose to, um, but just listen to them. Yeah, it's fascinating, fascinating. And then the human voice again. I like the way that the human voice breaks up because, again, I didn't expect the human voice to come in and I think that just adds an, a whole other element to it of listening yeah, I, I actually included my voice in that because when you um, you speak and you're recording an object, you can really hear the difference of the acoustic um, through your voice because we all know our speaking voices really well. So it's a great way to test um, an acoustic out. And if you if you watch again and really focus each object that my voice was um, speaking through had a really different resonance so the metallic object will make my voice sound metallic yeah, um, yeah. and it will sound more high pitched in a, in a small glass because the higher frequencies are kind of contained in that space so um, wow. yeah gosh great so it's about experimenting definitely playing having a bit of fun and seeing what happens cool I know we've got quite a lot of other things and we've already, <laughs> I think yeah, we could be yeah. here all day, couldn't we? That's the trouble. Could, um, yeah. So yeah. Um, what should we 
move on to so we'll move on to part two now um, yeah fantastic which, uh, so I'll be talking about two different pieces now not the practice of listening through shells anymore yeah um, but more about context of recording um, Brilliant. and I think what we'll do is we will um, go straight to unless you've got any questions um, from here we'll probably go straight to the video um, and then if there's time at the end we can always play uh, my my clear piece because yeah. because of time we, we probably should skip ahead okay so, cool um, this is a short excerpt of a video that is on youtube um, of an exhibition called Repeating Isn't Repetition that took place in Dye Hall in Huddersfield uh, last March, so almost exactly a year ago, which is quite special to play it now. Um, and it's it's a video um, that kind of shows some of the space. And I had a sound piece in this exhibition called Clear, which was installed near the front windows. Um, if there are any shots of the windows, I can't remember if there are. Um, so that when you were in the space, you heard this kind of quite backgroundy sound. And I'm not sure if, if you didn't know there was a sound piece on that you'd necessarily realise that there was something being played and it wasn't just the sounds of people walking by the glass uh, windows. Oh, nice. But then every now and again, there are iterations of my voice, again, similar theme, coming yeah. in to, um, and I do use the word interrupt, so that's nice, Jude, that you mentioned that, to kind of interrupt um, the environment and cause you to pay attention to this brief moment. And it was a performance that I did in my living room in the very early hours of um, I think the 31st of August, a few years ago. And I wanted to perform this piece throughout the twilight in the morning so the three forms of twilight civil nautical and I can't remember the other astronomical I was going to say don't ask me <laughs> not, not necessarily in that order though I sorry if I've got that wrong um but yeah and and I wanted to, to keep performing this piece until I heard the first bird song of the morning come through the window and that was going to um be what would kind of stop the performance occurring so I say performance it was just me um in my living room with a small recorder so I put I just pressed record and I sat at the piano because there is a, a keyboard chord that comes in softly with my voice and I just sang the word clear um I think I kind of focused on the traffic and sang it between sounds that were going on outside so it's quite sporadic and this um, recording is embedded a little bit in this video you probably wouldn't hear my voice more than a couple of times because it's only a couple of minutes um whereas if you were in the space for let's say you, you visited the gallery for 10 minutes you'd, you'd hear my voice a few different times within that time frame um so hopefully the audio will be okay on this video but um it just shows some of the artwork in the space so you can kind of see the context of uh, somewhere where I might exhibit um, and an exhibition that was sadly closed I thought it might be nice to show it um, absolutely so. and because Dye Hall is on the piazza isn't it in Huddersfield not far from Huddersfield Library so the context yeah. of that as well is quite local um, but it's on YouTube as you say so it kind of can be seen and heard and yeah. watched almost anywhere so I'll get that up and now so it's, it's curated by uh George Berenger who's vo whose speaking voice comes in I'll warn oh, you about that cool. one <laughs> oh wow coming in. um his voice comes in at some point Brilliant. after the first few shots to kind of um he's talking about sound so I thought that that was why I chose Ooh, this particular fantastic. part of the video so we need to listen really carefully for everything on this one <laughs>
And this is a lot like sound, which sound couldn't exist without repetition in the sense that the small sound waves, individuals of which we don't even apprehend perceptually, create the overall sound aggregates that we hear. Uh, and yet we don't hear those individual repetitions. And in a sense, because time has moved forward with each new wave crest, as it moves forward with each new brush stroke or, or manual operation with the wool in Valerie's work, for example, repetition itself doesn't actually exist. And that's something important for a lot of the works in this show. The, the marks themselves may be similar in time, but as time moves forward, there's change and new forms come into fruition. The show itself has been installed here in Dye Hall since March 16th when it opened. On March 17th, the show was closed and it's been hermetically sealed ever since due to the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic. And so we're offering you this virtual tour as a chance to see the exhibition because now we're not certain that it will ever really open. We may of course, try to repeat this initiative at some point in the future, uh, but it won't be a repetition. Excuse me for a moment. I just <laughs> suddenly had to cough. You could definitely, you could definitely hear the sounds because for me, I know the space that the exhibition was in and it, I could hear the traffic, which felt a little bit, oh, it's so weird. It, it did it like I wasn't expecting to hear traffic when I was wandering around that space looking at the exhibition so and then I obviously I heard your voice and you singing clear um but yeah so that changed the context of the space as well for me I was familiar with it so it just shows how sound can shift things a little bit sorry I'm gonna have to cough Hannah no, do you no, have no. any mention on that <laughs> yeah it's really interesting and good to watch um do you often work with lots of different people to put your sounds together? Yeah, I, I have done um, this year. I've I've definitely sensed um, collaboration. And I think it's just because of the times we're in. Um, it's nice to reach out to people and, yeah. and discuss practice. And that's why I'm really grateful to be invited to this event. So thank you both. Um, no problem but yeah it's it's strange isn't it because we're we're making and doing things on our own so much and um i think it's important to to find ways of connecting with people maybe sending someone a sound um rather than you know presenting it in a public space you can still have that connection um by sending things across and that question kind of brings us nicely into um, the final piece I wanted to talk about, which was the Cuckoo album that I mentioned earlier that I um, put together on Bandcamp after um, presenting that piece clear um, on Bandcamp as well. And for this project, I, in fact, I can share the, just use my other device here, that I've got set up to share um, a screen. So I've got a PDF file. 
that I can share, which is the call that I put out online. Is it this one? It might already be there. Okay. Is it possible to unpin me, Jude? Because I think my camera's coming up as larger than it did last time. If we all are... It's up online around about May last year. Um, and I was looking for recordings of rooms that people could make for me or, or maybe had made, um, but particularly over that time frame, because the idea was that I was going to embed uh, a song into into the rooms. I was trying to think about a way I could make work and put it somewhere rather than it just just being online or just being one space, like the space I recorded it in. So um, several people came back to me and sent recordings in and then I uh, placed my work um, or this song. I put a different verse in each room that I received. And that's now an album on my band camp that you can listen to. So that was a really nice way of collaborating. And it was almost like I was sent the the play. Like if, if I was singing in a concert hall, I would just sing into the room. But it was like I was being sent a room to then put um, a song into to send it back to that person. And I did that for about a month before I then released it so it felt more intimate in that way like they were receiving kind of a personal well the word concert is, is the wrong word to use but hopefully you know what I mean and then um, they all came together as an album because the song was kind of um, played in chronological order through the different rooms That sounds really great. I'll just bring Hannah up as well. <laughs> yeah, the screen share was kind of overtaking there. Um, sorry, did that make sense? It did. And now I'm large when I'm not supposed to be, but yay, <laughs> we're back to some. <laughs> it really did make sense. And and I knew a tiny bit about what you'd done, um, having read, you know, and, and listened beforehand. Um, but I hadn't actually thought about how, um, somebody sent you that actually recording of like I don't know their kitchen and then yeah. you insert a sa your, your your performance into that and then it goes back so yeah, that, yeah I thought it was a really great way of, of, of switching things around and then for somebody to then actually listen to a performance of their room but with you in it and yeah it's a great yeah. thing to do in lockdown to, to get that before, yeah, to get that connection with people. Yeah, and, it, and the whole um, song uh, was a was kind of referencing uh, the cuckoo bird, who is around at that time of year in the UK, because um, a lot of my work is quite seasonal, um, or I like to to find list. I'm listening, so I'm listening to things going on at yeah, yeah. times of year and kind of paying attention. So, um, although I didn't hear a cuckoo bird that spring I was trying to kind of find a way to embed my voice into these rooms which reminded me of the way that a cuckoo um, will place its own eggs into other birds nests um, which is quite a sad story isn't it but um, and these birds will, will bring up this cuckoo chick who will then take over the nest and sometimes um, the, the other eggs will fall for it fall down um and crack so wow. yeah but I kind of I liked this relationship of sending my voice and embedding it into like a different home 
Um, yeah. and then and then kind of being able to get that feeling that you do after singing live or um, presenting work live that you've kind of let go of your work and it's it's out there you've done it whether you made mistakes um you still did something and it's better to uh-huh. kind of have the experience of doing it than perhaps not to and so this kind of enabled me to send my work out to other people to kind of how ha- home house it really wow um, and do and we have a record it's, it's yeah, we can listen to um, one of the recordings from the album, which yeah, is yeah. Um, the kitchen of the uh, composer Stephen Chase. Um, Do you want to listen to that now? One. Yeah, we yeah, chose fantastic. that one for today because it's very, very subtle. So hopefully it comes through. Um, and my voice is really quite subtle, so you may need to listen closely. Listen really carefully. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Let's just get that up. I finished that after just two minutes because I'd love to have carried on playing but obviously I'm conscious of our time which always runs against us Um, (laughs) I'm just going to have a quick look Um, so we've got literally one minute I've got to give a shout out about something else so but before we rush off because I I just wanted to check whether there's anything else that you wanted to to mention Eleanor before we kind of I feel like we're ending in a bit of a rush actually but um, no don't worry that's fine I thought for me that video and that sound that we were just listening to that was a real good example of properly listening because you knew there was going to be a voice in there because of what you'd said so you're kind of listening very carefully to all the different sounds and then yeah like you say your voice is very subtle so you sort of think you've heard it and then you keep listening even stronger and then you hear it even better when when it comes up another time I think so that was a really good good example wasn't it it was a great example a great choice for 
um, using for this for us to be listening because one of the things was identifying the listening bit of it as well. well yeah, so I guess my message for the end um, with that is that you can think about um, embedding things into recordings. Uh, that's certainly what I did with that album in the end. So the other pieces, the, the voice sort of interrupts and comes in um, stronger than the background sound. But with that one, I really tried to work on making them um, sound like they were in the same place. So it, oh, so it seemed as yeah, if the yeah. voice was recorded in that room and was kind of, if you listen to that um, track again, um, perhaps on my Bandcamp page, um, and you can hear the audio, it, I tried to make it sound like the voice was embedded in the water and the noise of the fridge that I could pick up. I think there's yeah, like yeah. maybe a clock as well. So I was really trying to focus on all the details of these rooms I'd never been in by people that sent them to me and kind of work with them. So, um, yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Hannah, I'll just jump over to you just in case there's anything you might want to ask Eleanor briefly or... It was great just to listen to all the different sounds you've made, all the different things you've done and put together. I think it's really great what you've done, bringing people together during lockdown. And it's been oh, really nice to have you with us today to talk about yeah. your work. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. I've really enjoyed um, the opportunity to present work in this way. So. And it's been brilliant and practice and sound um, so what better today. way than oh sorry i just jumped over no. um i was just thinking about the fact that it's international women's day and it's fantastic having a female artist talk about sound art and and somebody who's as inspiring as you and enables us to think about how we might try it ourselves at home or or you know explore sort of sound and making sound and um, recording sound um, what a great takeaway for International Women's Day, I think. I've just got one thing to mention right at the end, which is I mentioned when I was doing the introduction that this is the first of our International Women's Day events. And we've got another one tonight at 7 p.m. And that will be our second International Women's Day events. There's quite a lot happening throughout Kirklees as well. So it's worth having a look on Kirklees together just to see about information from there. So tonight we've got local author Cl Clara Barley um, talking about her novel, The Moss House. And that centers on the relationship between Anne Lister and Anne Walker. So it's a kind of Gentleman Jack themed one. So it'd be really great if you could tune in there. It'll be on our usual Facebook, Twitter and YouTube channels. So just pop in at seven o'clock and that'll be there. And the last thing to do is just say thank you so much, Eleanor. That was just I found it extremely interesting. So I'm sure everybody who was watching did. Very informative, inspiring. Gets me to think about those times when I'm going out for a walk or when I'm in the house and listening to the sounds within the house, maybe getting my mobile phone out and doing a bit of recording um, and just seeing what happens. So Great. thank you yeah, send so me a recording, much. Jude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some very strange noises happening in the house. Yes, I will. I will. And uh, yeah, sorry that we can't get round to anything else. Um, no, we've asked you a few questions. It's been wonderful. It's been a great mix of video and sound. And we've all had a chance to have a good listen to everything. And I think all we need to do is say... Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Yeah, Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.